This is the Ford Puma, the brand's small SUV that arrived in Australia about two years ago. We really loved this car when it first launched, but in the time since, it failed to find success with Australian buyers. Aussies seem to be buying Mazdas and Hyundais, but seem to be giving the Ford Puma a bit of a miss. Why is that? Well, we're going to find out today if there's anything wrong or if this car is a bit of a hidden gem. This is the top of the line Ford Puma ST Line V that starts from around $40,000 drive away. So to find out, let's take the Ford Puma ST Line V for a bit of a drive. Let's go. The 2023 Ford Puma range starts from around $30,000 before on roads but our Puma ST Line V is the flagship range topper that starts from $36,390 before on-roads and options. Our test car was loaded with extras like grey matter paint for $700, an optional safety pack that's oddly disguised and called the parking pack for $990, and an opening glass roof for $2,200. Its total drive away cost in New South Wales is $44,727, a little expensive sure, but this Ford Puma is absolutely loaded with safety gear and luxury features. Jumping behind the wheel of the Puma ST Line V for the first time certainly reveals quite a high-end cabin. The presentation is nice, you've got a nice selection of materials, we've got some stitched vinyl on the dash, some textured faux carbon fibre that looks and feels nice, as well as some padded vinyl on the doors. Look a bit closer and you'll notice even more luxury touch points, like an opening sunroof, a 12-inch digital instrument cluster, a Bang & Olufsen stereo and these wonderful sports leather seats. They are manually adjustable but both driver and passenger have a massage function which sort of rubs your back up and down, helps the lumbar and keeps you nice and comfortable on those longer road drives. However there are a couple of things in this car that do feel a bit out of date. That 8 inch touchscreen is a bit small, could be a bit bigger to be honest, and the software interface isn't the best and the air conditioning controls do look a little bit basic. But overall it feels comfortable, these seats are great, it's got some luxury touch points going on. And I think for the money, it's fair game. Sitting in the back row of a Ford Puma as an adult, as you can see, can be slightly awkward and annoying. I'm about six feet tall. This is my driving position. And yeah, look, I can't get comfortable back here. I can't put my legs up behind the seat without lifting them up. My feet sort of do get under the seat in front of me. But look, in general, it's pretty tight back here. I'm very squashed and a little bit uncomfortable. In terms of other amenities, look, we've got a small opening sunroof area. We've got no air vents, no USB ports and no cup holders or fold down armrest either. Look, this car is probably aimed at those sinks and dink types, you know, single income, no kids, double income, no kids, need the second row occasionally. In terms of a young family, this car probably won't cut the mustard. I did put a baby seat in the back here, a Britax booster seat for my four year old son, and even that was a bit hard to get into. There's not much headroom here, so a tall booster seat does fall on the back of the roof area. Look, overall, it's not the biggest second row, but it will do as a temporary five seater. Making up for that small second row is a 410 litre boot space with the Ford Puma. We also get a standard fit electric tailgate as well. Looking at the space however, it doesn't look like 410 litres and that's because there's a party trick. If you lift up the floor you get another massive covered storage area underneath. You can throw your smelly gym shoes in there, anything you want to hide can be buried and you can simply lock it off and it's like it's not there. That's not all that's under that boot floor however, there is a spare wheel under there as well. In terms of storage space in the back, the Ford Puma is excellent for what is a small SUV. There's no denying the Ford Puma certainly feels sporty behind the wheel. This is an ST line version, so it's got some of the sports goodness, but without the high output engine. And you certainly feel that when you get behind the wheel and start driving it. It feels firm, it feels buttoned down, not overly firm, but definitely taut. The steering feels nice and direct and sharp and heavy and sort of all the things that you want in a, in a performance car. And yeah, it's quite an engaging car to drive. Under the bonnet, we've got a one litre three cylinder engine, which to be honest, isn't the most powerful thing in the world. You sort of put your foot down, it takes a while to respond. It doesn't accelerate too fast, but it's quite an engaging engine. To be honest, it revs quite nicely. It sounds nice. And most importantly, it's relatively frugal as well. Ford claims it'll use 5.3 litres on a combined cycle. And if we check the trip computer now, we're doing about 6.5 litres. So look, not too bad overall, but certainly not at the claim like Ford suggests. Around the five litres per hundred is hybrid territory. And I just don't think you'll achieve that in the real world with this car. Let's come back to ride quality for a second. I'm out on a fast country road here. It's quite smooth not too many imperfections and out here the car feels great, the steering feels nice, the car feels secure and planted and feels just like you want 
in a nice regional area. If you do move the car in town, however, this ride quality can get a bit tiresome. The car does get a bit busy, it is quite firm, and it never does settle down if the road quality or the road imperfections are quite frequent, which you do see in city areas. So, there is a bit of a downfall to the ride quality, but if you plan to get out of the big smoke and out on a nice drive, using that big boot to fill with your stuff and go out and bat for bushwalk or do all that sort of stuff, this car is probably right for you. I come back to that with this car too. The second row isn't the best, meaning it's not the best for families. So who's it for then? Single income owners, double income owners, maybe young kids, maybe as a first car. Sure, it probably is the ideal car for that, but as a family car, it's just a little bit too small and maybe a little bit too bumpy for your kids. Something else nice about this car is that it's full of driver assist systems, adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, autonomous emergency braking, but none of those get in the way of a good driving experience. They don't intervene too much, they're not overzealous with how they control the car, and they just let you know if you're exiting your lane or approaching something and should be using the brakes. Look, overall, the Ford Puma is a good car. It's fun to drive on a good road, it's frugal, but that second road does let it down and is a little bit bumpy and busy for your family. So look, if you're a single income owner or a double income owner with no kids, you'll probably love it. But if you're a family, there are probably better choices you can make in the small SUV segment. So what do we think of the Ford Puma ST Line V? Well, if you're a single income owner or a double income owner with no kids, I reckon this is the perfect car for you. It's fun to drive, it's engaging to drive even, and it's got a massive boot too for those adventurous types always getting out and about with bikes, gear, hiking, bushwalking, or whatever else you like to do on the weekend. If you've got kids, however, I don't think it's the ideal car for you. That second row is too small for children, and it lacks some amenities like air vents and other things that you'll find in other cars in the same segment. Overall, a really engaging car, but let down by a small second row, sadly. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like and subscribe to Drive's YouTube channel or visit us at drive.com.au to read the written review on this Ford Puma ST-Line V. Thanks for watching.